I loved reading Please Look After Mom by Gyung Suk Shin. This book straddles two time periods, two places, and two generations. As it does so, it explores universal themes and unveils a stunning mosaic of a mother, wife, daughter, friend, and sister, So Nyo Park. In addition to showing universal themes, it also shows the influence of Korean culture in daily life. Although we can see elements of Korean culture throughout, it is important to note that a single book cannot represent an entire culture. While reading, I couldn't help but feel overwhelmed by the love possible in mother-child relationships. At one point, ji the oldest daughter in the family, reflects, The word mom is familiar and it hides a plea. Please look after me, please be on my side, whether I'm right or wrong. Mom is the person you want to call whenever you despair. ji shows a common desire to be cared for and looked after, to have a supportive and constant parent. Love within families, in addition to at times tension and misunderstanding, was a theme sprinkled throughout each page. I could see this love portrayed through efforts to encourage education within the family. Being tight on money, the mother would make fermented malt and sell it to breweries in order to pay for tuition. On another occasion, when needing to pay an entrance fee for ji to go to middle school, quote, the gold ring that used to be on mom's left middle finger, her sole piece of jewelry, disappeared from her hand. The sacrifice mother was willing to make in order to send her children to school mirror the importance of education in Korea. During the Joseon dynasty, titles of nobility and government roles were accessed by passing tests on classical Chinese literature. People in upper classes were expected to study very hard for these exams. This history has bled into the emphasis on tests and studying in Korea today. Now airplanes do not even fly in Korea during the English listening section of the Suning exam so students can focus. As mother sacrifices her only jewelry or while she, quote, silently slid a plate of boiled sweet potatoes or persimmons into the room, end quote, to encourage her son hyung to keep studying, Please Look After Mom reflects the Korean cultural expectation that in order to be successful, you must excel in tests. Speaking of persimmons, I also often saw familial love given through food. ji recalls, Mom's love for hyung was such that she used to make a bowl of ramen only for him. On other occasions when traveling to visit hyung mother packs her pockets with peppers, chestnuts, or garlic to give him. Quote, if she could have, mom would have come to see him with eggplants or pumpkins tied to her legs. Even when dictating heartfelt letters, she would always end them with the same phrase, make sure you eat all your meals. The significance of food within common phrases or the repetition of food as gifts in this book help us see that it can be valued highly in Korea. The passages on food also made me think about gender and familial roles in both Korea and my own culture in America. ji states that mom was the kitchen and the kitchen was mom. And truly, for most of the book, we read about mother in the house, whether washing windows or preparing meals. Her experiences do not represent Korean culture as a whole, but they do show a cultural norm for rural Korean families in the time period directly following the Korean War. This norm reflects itself in the Korean language as well. Newe, a word to describe a married couple, literally means inside and outside to represent the wife and husband respectively. In my culture as well, women are often connected to certain tasks in the home. According to studies, in America, women are more likely to care for children on a daily basis, clean the house, and prepare meals than men. While having similar outcomes, unlike my culture, expectations and norms around gender in Korea are influenced by Confucian ideas. Prior to the Joseon dynasty, Korea was quite egalitarian. However, Confucian teachings that males and females should be treated differently led to many women being treated as property. The rhetoric was not that women were inferior, but that they were beautiful and needed protection. This often led to their seclusion in the home, although in agricultural areas, women were still expected to work in the fields. Like these ideas, Sonyo Park was married off because it was believed that she needed to be protected from other men. Sobbing to her mother, she asks, do I have to get married? But because of the rumor spreading that quote soldiers from North Korea snatched young women, she was married off. I have no idea if these rumors had any truth to them, but they do reflect some of the rhetoric. In contrast to mother, however, ji chooses not to marry, is a successful author and has her own apartment. Additionally, ji younger sister chooses to keep running a pharmacy while raising her kids. Gyeong Suk Shin shows that cultural norms or simply opportunities available to women have changed drastically. 
Through the contrast between increased opportunities for her daughters and the mother's limited reality, the author shows the difficulty and at times damage of living according to some gender norms. For example, we see how Chagrin follows the mother throughout her life because she never had the opportunity to learn to read or write. When referring to her daughter, Sonia Park says, Since she's a girl, she has to get more schooling. I can't have her live like me. Although sometimes showing the difficulty and damage of older gender norms, the author does not disavow some traditional roles of a woman and mother either. When Jihon asks her mom if she likes being in the kitchen, she responds, I don't like or dislike the kitchen. I cooked because I had to. Later on though, she says that sometimes when she wouldn't want to cook, she would throw lids. She advises Jihon, if you don't want to cook, you should try throwing a dish. Despite sometimes feeling fed up, she also says, When I watched you sitting around the table, eating with your spoons making a racket in the bowls, I felt like there was nothing else I wanted in the world. She describes those years she spent bending over backward to feed her kids as the happiest days in her life. The author shows that spending all one's time in the house caring for children can be joyful. The reader comes away with a sense of awe and gratitude for how Sonia Park lived for her family. It is not fair to say that the positive light shrouding the mother shows that Korean culture values isolating and hierarchical gender roles, but it does reflect a cultural value of sacrificing and living for family. The cultural value of caring for one's family could be seen in the children's attitudes as well. For example, Jihan feels guilty for ways she spoke to her mom or refused even small suggestions like not trying on a frilly dress her mom asked her to put on. In remorse, Jihan says, I realized that I could have done everything she wanted me to. It wasn't important. I don't know why I got under her skin over things. The guilt portrayed shows the value placed on sacrificing and living for family because people feel guilt when they don't live up to what they believe is right. In addition to being depicted as a value, sacrificing for one's family is also depicted as a cultural norm. When the oldest son watches his mom take the train back home, he vows, I'll make money and move to a two-room place, I'll rent a house, I'll buy a house in the city, then I'll be able to have a room that this woman can sleep in comfortably. This shows a cultural norm because Young Tor expects himself to buy a house his mom could stay in. Although portrayed in different ways and to different extents in Korea, I don't think this value is unique to Korea itself. In my culture, it is not expected for my older brother to have a place for my parents to stay. However, especially in my church culture, it is valued when people make sacrifices for their family. Sacrificing and living for others reminds me of teachings throughout the Bible saying that whosoever will lose his life shall find it, or that charity seeketh not her own. Possibly my favorite part of the novel was a sense of our interconnectedness and reliance on each other. While pondering what her daughter once told her, Mother thinks, all things that have happened are actually mixed in with current things, and current things mingle with future things, and future things are combined with old things, it's just that we can't feel it. Although we don't see all the influences, we are built on the struggle and trials, nourishment and growth of those who came before us. However, Kyung Suk Shin shows that they are relying on us just as we would not exist without them. While I, like Ji Hon, hope that my mother will always look after me and be on my side, my mom, like Sonia Park, also needs me to look after her.